what I do is uh, kind of hard to explain. Um, uh, once upon a time, I would have been able to say I make websites and um, that's still true to a certain extent, but it's probably not what I spend most of my time doing these days. I spend more time talking about making websites, um, writing about making websites, uh, discussing the process of making websites. Uh, but in terms of what I care about, that's maybe easier to answer. And that's, uh, that's been uh, pretty much a through line uh, for many years. Um, I very much care about the web, the World Wide Web. And as a result of that, I care about accessibility. And, and the reason I say it, it's as a result of that is that I think um, my, my attitude towards accessibility comes from the attitude of the web towards accessibility. Um, the fact that it is something that um, it, it's not an accident that uh, the web is is very accessible by default. Uh, Tim Berners Lee explicitly set out to make something universal, something uh, with a with a low barrier to entry. And so I feel like my own um, my own attitude, my own feelings towards how I build on the web is very much influenced by the principles that informed the web itself. So th this these ideas of um, universal access to information, regardless of device type, regardless of ability, uh, regardless of the sort of content we're dealing with. Um, that's basically filtered down to me and uh, is, is one of those things that yeah, it informs everything I do to the extent that I kind of don't think about it that much. Um, it's one of those, those real embedded things uh, that, you know, you just take for granted at a certain point. For those people that, that haven't considered uh, accessibility or aren't aware of it, how would you personally go about explaining the importance of, of online accessibility to, to, the, to someone who's not heard of it or thought about it? I like the way you're framing the question of this is someone who, who isn't aware of it, because mm. a lot of time we talk about, oh, how do you sell accessibility to someone who doesn't care about it? Um, which actually is, is just not a problem I've come across, because most people I find once they're aware of it, they do care about it they might yes. prioritize different things, right? They might say, well, you know, we have to make a profit no matter what, and therefore we're going to deprioritize accessibility, whatever. But it's, there's no one out there who's going like, oh, I'm, I'm against accessibility. Or, I don't like accessibility. So, um, yeah, the, the, I feel like there's, there's maybe a trope that we we have to convince people about accessibility. We don't. But but your question is mm -hmm. about people who aren't aware of it. And that, that's, a, that's a more interesting one. Because I feel like... Um, it, accessibility is almost in the same category of things like performance or security, as in these things are really important. They're really fundamental, but they're also invisible. And because they're invisible, um, most people aren't aware of them. And, and why should they be? I mean, we, we are naturally biased towards the visible. So we think of the web maybe as a visual medium because we see it. We think about, um, you know, what's what's right in front of us. but behind that there's there's all these important factors like I said which accessibility is one along with performance and security um so that's usually that's how i would start it's trying to get across this idea that um one of the web's superpowers is the fact that it's not actually just a visual medium that it's its universality extends to you know it being consumed or, or or people getting stuff done on the web in a way that doesn't involve you know uh images, a graphical browser, uh, pixels on a screen. Um, hmm. And most people respond really well to that. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, never thought of that. It's, it's kind of like you're opening up the world to them to say, you know, there's this whole um, audience maybe you hadn't even thought of, hadn't even considered uh, exists out there, um, which is great. I will say at, at that moment, though, when people get like, oh, accessibility is a thing and I care about it. Um, that's also when there's a bit of a danger because people can immediately start to, okay, I need to make my website accessible and come across maybe bolt on solutions like, oh, I'll use this overlay from Accessibility or whatever. And now I've made my website accessible. And yeah, right. it's not done out of malice. It's not done out of um, trying to cut corners. These people mm -hmm. genuinely uh, want care. They genuinely want to make their website accessible. And the, what they're reading seems to imply that this is the way to do it. Um, sure. So yeah, there's this really interesting window where people have become aware of accessibility. They absolutely care about it, but there's also maybe a danger in that moment of like, okay, but follow through and understand a bit more about how it needs to be a foundational thing and not something that you slap on top.
how do you think the internet will change over the next 10 years? Um, kind of with, with the previous question in mind, what habits exist now that you hope might be seen as kind of from their time? Predicting the future is a bug's <laughs> game. Uh, the <laughs> artsy Clark had something to say about this. Like, no matter what you do, you know, you're going you're gonna to yeah. either seem ridiculously um, short-sighted or ridiculously optimistic. But um, so I, I don't know if I, I'll attempt to predict, but, but in no. terms of what I hope uh, will change, um, this isn't necessarily related to accessibility, but as your question was about the internet rather than just the World yeah, sure. Wide Web, um, I do hope that, and I think this is beginning to happen, that the, the kind of obsession with um, apps, as in iOS apps and Android apps, by default, um, instead of considering the web as, as a delivery mechanism, um, I hope that that will fade away. Not that they will disappear or anything, but just that, you know, um, appropriate use, I guess, is what I'm hoping for. That when you, when you need an app, you build an app. Or if you should be a website, you build a website. Um, right now, a lot of things are apps that should be websites, I feel. And it's it's just the appropriateness of it that, that gets to me. Um, but I do see that somewhat changing. And certainly from a technical perspective at this point, there's very little um, technical reason why you'd need to build a, an iOS app or an Android app rather than building a website. Um, but that is it is tied to accessibility in the broader sense of accessibility, as in, you know, the universality of a URL, the fact that, you know, you can link someone to a website, you can put it on a poster or whatever, and they get the access immediately without having to go through the gatekeeping of an app store, or without having to go through that whole process. Um, I would love to see that frictionless uh, access um, become the default. Not that we wouldn't also make dedicated, you know, platform specific apps when necessary, but, um, but that the default shouldn't be, oh, we need to wrap this up into um, an app for iOS and put it in an app store, or an app for Android, put it in the Play Store. Um, so that's something I'm hoping will change. Um, I'm, I said, I think from a technical point of view, um, we're practically there. Um, once notifications land on iOS next year, then there'll be very little you can not do in a web browser, even on mobile. But I got to be honest, I'm a little pessimistic about human nature and rate of change. Um, inertia is a very powerful force, and it's hard to imagine people changing their def their default viewpoint and outlook so quickly. That said, I've been pleasantly surprised in the past, so um, here's hope. And like I, I, I thought when responsive design came along, I thought this is brilliant and it totally maps to how I feel about the web. You know, sort of trying to lock things into specific um, widths. You know, we should be embracing the fluidity. So mm -hmm. I totally got on board with responsive design, but I was convinced it was going to really struggle and take many years or decades. And actually, it um, it seemed to become the default relatively quickly. If you're with someone who needs to check how accessible their website is, and they only have five minutes, um, so very kind of specific, but yeah. talk us through how you'd go about showing them, how you'd give them that kind of insight into, into what it means. So on a practical level, I've got some bookmarklets uh, saved to my browser and I, I hit some of those and what those bookmarklets then do is a couple of things that are really relatively low hanging fruit from most websites um, are you using headings and I know that you know the next step is are, are the heading levels correct and blah, blah blah but honestly that's almost that's that's the icing on the cake but just are you even using headings to begin with like reasonable yeah, yeah. headings great okay that's one um, all text in images, not just does it exist, but you know, is it good? Does it make sense? And there's a whole art to that. Um, uh, you know, structural elements like the landmark roles, nav and main and stuff, that's that's super useful stuff. And again, most websites should pass those. I mean, it's, it's pretty low hanging fruit. Um, and the one again, that honestly, that from a technical point of view, this is not hard to do, but form fields, just making sure you're using labels and form fields correctly using the right, you know, not reinventing the wheel and making up your own interactive element if there's uh, something that you can use for free that the browser will will understand. Um, that that's probably the that's probably the area where it's easiest to find the issues and fix the issues and have the biggest impact. Like, I mean, if you if you hmm. can do that, if you can just make sure you got headings, structural landmarks. All text and images and forms that are using 
you know labels correctly and the right form elements i mean you're you're most of the way there and you're doing better at that point than 90 percent of most websites so yeah even in five minutes maybe you could identify those we, we may have touched on this but in terms of, of the adoption of, of more accessible digital products and the more accessible digital web what do you think is the biggest challenge it's sort of cultural in the sense of it's about what organizations prioritize again you, you'd be hard pressed to find an organization that says we don't care about accessibility every organization will, will say they care about accessibility and i believe them they do but if you ask them to rank all the things they care about you know customer service profitability usability accessibility then it'd be interesting to see where accessibility lies and that ranking, that list of priorities, that comes across in the final product. So sometimes through no ill will, a product launches that isn't accessible because the people building that product, their priorities were elsewhere. Um, maybe they were, maybe they lacked the awareness of how they could have made it more accessible in the you know early phases of that project, um, or they had the awareness, but the priority, the pressure was on to do something quickly and not necessarily do it well. Um, so it's that culture shift. I'd love to see accessibility. And actually, I think at this point, this gets into an interesting question of the difference between accessibility and inclusive design. Accessibility, uh, and this is something I got from, I was chatting to Irina Rusakova, uh, who's something, someone you should get on the this show, actually. She's, she's great. Um, and she talks about inclusive design and she, she kind of answered this question a bit in front of my mind, which is what is this difference between accessibility and inclusive design? And accessibility is kind of focused on the implementation, on the, on the output, the thing that gets produced. Is it accessible? How accessible is it? Can it be more accessible? Whereas inclusive design is, a, is more about the process that led to that thing being produced. And so when I talk about there needs to be maybe more of a cultural, you know, organizational change, I'm probably not really talking about accessibility. Yeah. I'm probably talking about inclusive design, as in oh. this, the conditions, the priorities need to be in place first, that, that accessibility is prioritized in order to ensure that the end result is then more likely to be accessible. So maybe that isn't even accessibility per se, it's more inclusive design. Yeah, I guess uh, the, the, the adoption of inclusive design speaks to that culture shift that would make for more accessible digital products. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was blogging about this just the other day and I was saying like, like as a thought experiment, imagine someone who's an accessibility expert. They know ARIA and WCAG and all that stuff, like the back of their hand. Great. Mm -hmm. But you put that person into a big organization that doesn't prioritize accessibility and it's going to be very, very hard for that person, despite all their skills and all their knowledge, oh. to make an impact and to, to get good work done because they'll be fighting against yeah. the system. But meanwhile, if you had an organization that genuinely cared and prioritized inclusive design, even if nobody at the organization is actually a, a expert on mm -hmm. accessibility, it's more likely that the products being produced will be accessible. What is one thing that every single person can do or learn to play a part in the progression towards a more accessible internet? Mm -hmm. This this is tricky. Um, I'm not sure if there's one thing anyone can do. I guess there's maybe just an awareness thing. It it would be nice if there was a more general awareness that uh, the internet and the web aren't just visual mediums. You know, it's not just about um, pixels on a screen. I don't know if there's anything people can do about that. Um, you know, I don't, yeah, yeah, the onus probably shouldn't be on uh, everyone else. The onus is probably on us to make it so that they they don't have to know that. They don't have to care about that, that uh, yeah. the stuff will just work anyway.